In this episode, we'll take a look at the Deity S-Mic 2S Short Shotgun Microphone. First of all, this entire episode is recorded with the S-Mic 2S. We have not done any processing aside to loudness normalize, as specified below. If you'd like to see the review for the original Deity S-Mic 2, you can see that in the upper corner here. The approach we're going to take here really is largely going to focus on the difference between the original Deity S-Mic 2 and the short version, which is now coming out in mid-October. The intended use for shotgun microphones is typically, of course, recording dialogue or sound effects, usually outdoors, although with a short shotgun microphone you don't run the risk of picking up some of the phase or comb filtering interference issues that you would with a longer shotgun microphone. So this might make it a little bit better suited for indoor purposes. Here are some samples relative to a couple of other microphones. Please use your highest quality headphones to be able to hear the differences here. Here are audio samples with four different microphones here compared, first of all, the S-Mic 2S from Deity. That's the short shotgun microphone that we're reviewing here. Next up, we have the Deity S-Mic 2, the longer shotgun microphone, also from Deity. Next, we have the Asden SGM3500. That is also a short shotgun microphone, very much like the S-Mic 2S. And then finally, for reference, we have the Sennheiser MKH416. Not because it's in the same league necessarily, but because it's a reference microphone here. It's a, it's a sound that a lot of people are familiar with. Most everyone's heard that microphone before. I'm recording in my basement studio here, blankets on either side of me hung from the ceiling, one back by the camera, a rug underneath me, a blanket down behind me, concrete wall back there, and concrete floors between me and the camera. We are recording all of these into the Sound Devices MixPre 10 2 audio recorder, and we're doing it in 24-bit mode. I know some people might have a question about that. So this is what it sounds like. Let's go ahead and give you a moment of silence so we can compare how each of these microphones handle room tone a little bit differently. And there's a sample for you. As part of that overall evaluation of the sound, I also loudness normalized all of the audio to minus 23 LUFS stereo, minus 26 LUFS mono, and measured the silent portion to see where the noise floor sat. And we can see here that they all came in pretty close. The S-Mic 2S came in at minus 74 dB. The S-Mic 2 came in at minus 73 dB. The SGM 3500 from Asden came in at minus 69 dB. And the Sennheiser MKH 416 also came in at minus 74 dB. So in terms of self noise performance, and I think practical noise performance in a quiet room, You've got a good mic here you can work with and you're not going to be fighting all that kind of hissy noise that cheaper microphones make on their own. Now a big difference you'll see between shorter shotgun microphones and longer shotgun microphones is typically how well they do at rejecting sound that is off axis. That is to say it's not at the front of the microphone. So here's a sample looking at the polar pattern on the S-Mic 2S versus the S-Mic 2 and also just for comparison's sake the Sennheiser MKH416. So as you can see, the S-Mic 2 does a little bit better than the S-Mic 2S, so it's going to be a little bit better suited if you're really trying to isolate the sound you're trying to capture and reject some of the ambient sound. 
And then the Sennheiser MKH416 actually beat both of them by a significant margin. So if you really need to attenuate off-axis sound, I think a longer shotgun microphone is going to be a better option for you typically. Here's a practical outdoor sample for a job I did recently. We're the Allen family. We're from Alinko, and we really... Uh, what do we say? I don't even know what to say now. Now I'm uh, tongue-tied. Yeah, so this is my brother, Jill, <laughs> and this is my sister, Nick. <laughs> And we're happy to be here supporting the, the uh, mascot bull, but uh, the Allen family's been in business for, gosh, over 100 years, I think, uh, making mascots and costumes, and um, we, we, uh, that's it. Because the microphone body is made out of brass, it has not experienced any sort of RF interference as of yet, so any radio frequency. You, typically on less expensive mics with an aluminum tube, you are much more likely to experience RF interference. Here, because we're using brass, haven't had any issues yet. I am told that the S Mic 2S is weather resistant, just like the original S Mic 2. Now, I am not the kind of guy that's going to huck my microphone in a toilet to test that. If you're interested in seeing that, I would recommend checking out the Basic Filmmaker's channel. He does stuff like that. The microphone also comes with a hard case, a microphone stand clip, a foam wind cover, which is good for cueing in the very lightest of breezes, but you're really gonna need more substantial wind protection if you're gonna be shooting outdoors a lot. The microphone stand clip is really just for microphone stands. It's not gonna work if you're gonna be hand booming the microphone. You'll pick up a lot of vibration and other noise and things that'll transfer to the microphone capsule. So you'll still need a good shock mount. The microphone comes with a four year warranty and you can add an additional year of warranty by registering your mic with Deity. Now, are there any cons? Uh, I'm getting pretty picky here. There are what some people may consider a couple of cons. Number one, just like the original S Mic 2, and just like the Sennheiser MKH416, there is no high pass filter built into the microphone itself, so your recorder will need to supply that if you're going to use one to eliminate hum and low frequencies. Number two, it does not have a high frequency or presence switch so that when you bury it in some sort of wind muff, that it kind of emphasizes the high frequencies a little bit more to take care of the fact that that wind muff is cutting some of the high frequencies. So none of these three microphones have that either. Not necessarily a deal breaker, it just depends on your application. Overall, the S-Mic 2S to me seems like a very good microphone. It is priced at launch at approximately $319 USD, I'm told. I don't know if that's subject to change. And it should be available mid-October according to Andrew over at Deity. Now, when would you choose the short shotgun microphone versus the longer shotgun microphone? Well, I think if you're primarily going to be recording indoors and very occasionally outdoors, I think that the short shotgun microphone is going to be a better choice for you. There is a small risk, and it's a small risk. I haven't, even in my own testing that I did for this microphone here, with the S-Mic 2, the original, I wasn't able to get it to do that kind of phasey comb filtering effect that you sometimes get. What happens is if you get off the axis of the microphone and you're in a reverberant room, sometimes you get this sort of warbling sound. And there's not really a great way to fix that in post. It's a little bit hard to predict exactly when it's gonna happen. And I couldn't reproduce it in this particular case. I have experienced it in the past with a shotgun microphone. And that's not just Deity microphones. It's all shotgun microphones when you're working indoors. The shorter shotgun microphones are less likely to experience that. So. If you are doing most of your shooting indoors, I think that's when the short version makes sense. If you're going to be doing more of your shooting outdoors and you want a little bit more isolating capability, then I think that's when the original Deity S Mic 2 makes a little bit more sense. So overall, I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.